Hello and welcome to Your Online Strength Coach, episode 11, Feet Up Bench Press. Hello, how's it going? Welcome to episode 11. Um, you'll be listening to this on the 7th of July 2015. Um, this again, <laughs> for more of the labour saving, this one's been recorded on Monday the 6th of the 7th 2015. Um, today's question uh, comes from Ian under, I think he left a comment under episode 9 if I remember correctly, yes. Um, Ian asks, feet up bench pressing. Do you view it as a good assistance movement to improve bench performance powerlifting? Do you view it as a viable lift to replace the full bench press over a couple of training blocks? To extend the question further, how do you view using variations of the big three only when far enough out from a comp? Is time still better spent on straight lifts? So probably could spread this one out to a couple of episodes, um, <laughs> but we're just going to tackle it, I think. Um, so we'll try not to have this one run on too long. First of all, um, feet up bench pressing is an amazing <laughs> uh, assistance lift for uh, bench press. It really depends on the lifter. Um, if you're a lifter who lacks control, if you're quite prone to collapsing in, like if you train with a lot of touch and go in your lifting, and you're the sort of person that bounces from the bottom, or you're the sort of person that bombs into the bottom half or third range, then performing um, feet up, pause, bench press is one of the best ways to learn bar control and how to pause. Um, also, a very good way of teaching you how to um, control the bar path down and actually get a feel for um, how to like arch without taking up a super rainbow position that you'll see in a lot of um, powerlifters doing which is of course a great thing because it cuts off the range of motion um, but I, I do think it's a, it's a great assistance lift, it's probably one of the better bodybuilding assistance lifts, assistance lifts you can do for the bench press because it is super specific um, and will, will help to build a lot of uh, very useful math, math of the, the mass in the correct places and um, Definitely, in some um, for some lifters in some scenarios, it's it's definitely one of my go-to um, training devices I'll use to kind of get the effects out of people that I want. Um, it's not really something I would use um, in like a special prep in a not special preparation, but a specific preparation cycle. So, if you're in a ten-week build-up to a meet, or you're doing just um, powerlifting specific strength work, and you're Bench technique is generally pretty good, um, so you have good control, and you generally you can you can pause close to your max in competition conditions. And you're not the sort of person that, like benches two hundred and thirty kilos in the gym, touch and go, and then pauses like one seventy because your your gym lifts are so awful that you can't transfer it. Um, for that sort of person, then it can be a very good kind of off season movement. Or it can be a fairly good kind of bodybuilding movement. So if you bench, say, three times a week, maybe on week two you do a variation like an incline or or a decline or you do a shoulder press instead of a bench press. And feet up bench press can be a pretty good uh, bodybuilding accessory for that. Um, and it is, it's also a very good off-season lift, um, which brings me on to the next question. Do you view it as a viable lift to replace the full bench press over a couple of training blocks? Absolutely. Um, depending on if you are, if depending on the kind of lifter you are, um, if if you like we said before, if you lack control in your bench press or your technique isn't great, like your line is erratic, then I think I absolutely think it's a, a great um, exercise variation to use for a couple of blocks, and uh, definitely in like an off season kind of scenario. Where you don't have any meets coming up for eight to eight eight months, six months, whatever. If you have like a two block period where you're just kind of doing general stuff, definitely worth a look, um, and definitely is a viable uh, assistance exercise as well. Um, to extend, uh, yes, I've done that. Um, to extend the question further, how do you view using variations of the big three 
only went far out enough from a comp. I think it's um, it's a great way of doing it because you you can only do so much specific preparation without with, without coming to a head, without coming to some kind of sticking point. Um, you'll find when you do specific uh, when you over when you overload specific um, movement patterns or if you if you do a specific fitness session or you're trying to improve over a specific distance like you're trying to like improve an endurance over like 800 meters 1200 meters ultra specific training will get you so far it only has so much traction and then you've got to kind of look at outside factors which is the case with lifting as well as it is any sport. So in the off season, um, if you have an off season, if there even is an off season for powerlifting, um, but if you're doing like a general preparation block, like you're a few months out from a meet, um, and you're just kind of working on strength, then I, I do think using variations is a is a great way of going about it. So if you're a sumo lifter training, the, the conventional deadlifts a great idea. If you're a if you're a fairly high bar squatter. Maybe looking at box squats, superset it with pause squats, maybe a good idea, or look at front squats. Um, if your bench technique isn't great, looking at um, different bench variations, like um, benching without touching your chest, um, looking at improving, like if your shoulder strength is appalling compared to your bench strength, although it's not normally a block, but like doing kind of general preparation is not, not a bad idea, so like shoulder press, incline press. Um, working on your pulling strength, just just working on general all round. Like hypertrophy is a really good place where you'll get some traction. Um, you'll definitely get some gains out of that, no doubt about it. So if you um, typically just do specific um, three big three, just do them in your training, which is by far the best way to prep for a meet and to train in general for the sport of powerlifting. However. I do do believe you either need blocks or you need periods in your training where you can focus on technical errors, technical corrections, probably a good place for this sort of lifting. Um, like if you fall forward in the squat, band squats, awesome for that. And it'll teach you to brace and push up with your back out of the hole. Um, it's just basically uh, is it, is it the great, they're great problem solving tools um, to introduce some kinetic learning as opposed to saying lift your chest up or whatever during a lift. You'll tend to get much better traction if you change the, the, the learning environment, use different like use novel kinds of feedback, uh, kinesthetic feedback, like if you're coaching someone. So it's, it's kinda comes into that kind of realm where you're changing you can change the kinesthetic feedback of a lift by putting a band on it, putting a chain on it, pausing it, doing a tempo Doing it in a different gym, and doing it in front of mirrors, not doing it in front of mirrors, changing the environment would quite good if, if you're a fairly skilled lifter. You would get quite a lot of traction from that. If you're not a skilled lifter, then just stick to the boring three lifts and just keep at it. <laughs> you probably need to do that for a while. If I put a number on a three, four, five years, something like that, before we can really start getting traction with this kind of this kind of lifting. And is time still better spent on straight lifts? Yes, probably the majority of your training. Um, I don't know if I want to put a time split on it, but obviously because I mentioned I'm going to, I'd probably say you'd be looking to spend 75% of your time doing um, lift-specific work, just lift-specific volume, and then 25% will be spent either with complete rest or uh, like novel training or kind of an off-season sort of training. Like every other sport in the world does it, so there's no reason why powerlifters shouldn't. Um, I'll conclude this episode. Um, this is Mark of Your Daily Strength Coach podcast signing out. If you'd like any questions answered, please send an email. It's bpowerformance at gmail.com. Website is still not up. Uh, it is time of preseason. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's probably not going to go up this month. Um, we're probably looking like August, back end of August. But if you're interested in hitting me up some training programs, speedpowerperformance uh, at speedpowerperformance at gmail.com is the email to send your uh, inquiries into. You want to make some mad gains? Um, check out castironstrength.com, the website where my blog is. Um, post on the forums there if you want. Uh, if you can leave a comment, obviously, under any of the YouTubes, them YouTubes, um, to get yourself some answers to some questions. Uh, okay, so that concludes this episode. Until next time, 
Goodbye. I'll see you Wednesday.